Research and discovery. Futurists. A new breed of robots is being developed for life in the city. One day they may be collecting our waste, guiding tourists or helping the elderly. But the street is a challenging new environment for these machines. Urban robots are a new kind of robot, different to those we have until now, which are industrial-style robots. The basic quality of these robots is that they should be able to get along with people. Certainly it's difficult to move a robot around among people because that's what we're talking about, a non-structured environment in which the robot moves and where the robot shares the space with people. So this is certainly an important innovation, a change in robots. At the forefront of that innovation is Duskart, a robot rubbish collector from Italy. This little green man is designed to go from door to door, taking away waste on demand. The first thing to do when the citizen calls the robot is to open the drawer using the touch screen. He then puts the bag of waste inside closes the drawer using the touch screen and then at the end types in the type of rubbish, in this case paper. Once loaded up, Duskart would take the rubbish to a central collection point. The idea is that these robots can easily access small streets, city centres where traffic's limited, squares, historic centres where the pavement surface is uneven. So it can get close to people but not be in the way. But getting around a bustling city is tough enough for humans, let alone robots. Here in Barcelona, a team of engineers are working on a solution to allow robots to operate independently in urban areas. Their prototypes are called Tibi and Darbo, and the idea is that they could one day become robot tourist guides. On board are three computers running a barrage of sensors and equipment. We have a lot of problems to resolve. For example, in this project, what we tried to work out was how to get the robots to be able to work cooperatively with the sensors around them and with people. That was our objective. We began work with the most basic elementary things. For example, autonomous navigation. That's to say, they'd be able to move around and find out where they are. Those are things that to us seem to be very routine and very simple, but for the robots, they're very complex. Ah, no, it's so easy. The team's solution is to build a network. This campus is equipped with Wi-Fi internet and 20 cameras to allow the robots to navigate around. The same setup would be needed in any city for Tibi and Darbo to work autonomously. In this in this environment, we have sensors that allow us to give information to the robots, and the robots can communicate with people or directly between themselves, or even through the network of sensors that are in the campus. Another smaller robot paves the way for Tibi and Darbo. It plays a crucial role in helping the robots move in an urban environment. This robot is called Helena. We use it in the context of the EUROS project to build the maps of the environment in which the other robots navigate. It's important that our robot has the same sensors as the others. In this case, we have two cameras that are placed in the same position as Tibi and Darbo, the other robots, so that when they see Helena's pictures with their cameras, the images match. 
These robot maps look nothing like the maps we'd use to get around a city. Our maps have distinct components. The most basic is the geometrical elements that the maps have, surfaces, lines, points. But then there's a high level, which is the one that looks like the one humans use, and that's the symbolic one. The maps have to be annotated in a symbolic way in order to know that I'm in a corridor, or I'm behind a building, or I'm in the entrance to another building. Navigating around the city may be difficult, but drawing attention from its citizens is easy enough, at least for Duskart. These curious and admiring glances are just as the designers intended. The first idea we had when we made a drawing of this robot was a bin with two wheels. That's because the idea was to quickly make it clear what the robot was meant for. Then, working with people through questionnaires, we understood the importance of the emotional aspect, the feeling that the robot gives off. That's the reason why we have a head with eyes and a body, which is much more human than a bin with two wheels. Both of these European projects share similar objectives to develop networked robots able to move autonomously in an urban area while interacting with humans. The researchers are optimistic that these machines can help us in our daily lives, although there are still huge technical hurdles to overcome. I believe that in the forthcoming years people will have no problem in calling a robot to come and pick up their waste because in fact the robot uses common technology like using a mobile phone or connecting via internet so the approach to technology as a whole has changed very much in recent years. One of the main tasks of the robots is that in order to be useful to human beings, they should be able to adapt themselves to different environments. If the robots aren't able to see in situations where there's dust or where the light changes, they won't be able to survive. Also, if they can't work out where the sound is that they use for information is coming from, then again, they won't be able to survive. There's still a tough road ahead before these urban robots become a common sight on our streets.